Wood and yeah, we're going to be moving into game two. Our players drawing their first seven cards. If you're new to Lorcana, there is a mulligan stage in Lorcana. Both players will be able to look at these seven, throw as many as they want back to the bottom of the deck and then draw back up to seven before shuffling again. And this part of the game where you curate your hand is one of the biggest skill uh, tiers in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks like Zeus, grab your swords and Tinkerbell Tiny Tactician being gotten rid of by Martin for now. They're certainly going to hold on to that Cherna box followers and uh -huh. it looks like they're going to hold on to Lawrence they're going to be looking for Mr. Smee on turn number two Maleficent biding her time would also be great now Yano doesn't have access to any ramp this time Baker mm -hmm. they do have Mr. Smee for turn two but they don't have that one cost captain hook which they might like Yep, no, absolutely. I think we're going to be throwing five, uh, no, four cards back into the deck. Looking for that ramp. They uh -huh. only play three copies of Mickey Mouse, interestingly. And it does seem as though they missed the ramp, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we are. It's three copies of Mickey Mouse. And of course, the four fishbone quill. But as you mentioned earlier, Martin does have access to these bengers that could immediately punish that. Are we, oh, are we, oh, I thought we missed one drop. We do have a porpsicle. So that's a start. But you've got to imagine the captain who would have been the preference. Yeah. yeah, Captain Hook would be nice. Also, Baboons to try and answer those yep. aggressive questing yep. threats. They don't have fire the cannons. Interesting that they did also get rid of Grab Your Swords Tinkerbell. Maybe if they had the Fishbone Quill or the Mickey in the opening hand, those cards could have been kept. Now, Martin has not got that Maleficent, but they do have a China Box for turn two and a, Ch a China Box for turn one, rather, and potentially a China Box for turn two as well. So they're going to be really hoping to find off the top either a Mr. Smee for turn two. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if Martin inks the China Box here because if they top deck an another one drop, they're going to be able to go for that triple one drop uh -huh. by turn two play. And they do decide to ink the Baboom as a result, which I really like to see. Yeah, when you saw when Martin was mulliganing, he was considering the idea of keeping that Queen's Castle, which I get the temptation. Sapphire still can really struggle to deal with them. But draw. It's a rabbit. It is a rabbit. But no, prioritizing wanting to find those one drops. And yeah, as you say, this could be just a aggressive uh, collection of one drops hitting the field on the next turn. We're going to ink the Madam Mim Fox. Yep. And I expect it will be that Shona Box followers coming down. The first one's going to quest. I expect it will stay on the board because Yano's not going to have a way of dealing with it efficiently. Of course, uh, things like Baboom could make the difference, but the Shona Box seems pretty safe. Yeah, and if Martin draws with this, if Martin draws with this Shona Box followers, the other one can get Baboom. So really good to see that Martin made that decision to ink Baboom on turn one. Mm -hmm. They did have the option of playing the Madam Mim Snake on turn two and bouncing the Shona Box followers back to the hand. But the game plan for Amethyst Steel in this one is just get as much lore as you possibly can in the early game and then regain the board. Interestingly, the Chernobogs comes off the top now, just one turn too late. They would have loved to have played that down as a double Chernobogs play on turn two. Now the Chernobogs followers, it seems like Martin, is going to be an option to draw with. Going to keep it on the, the first one on the board. Yeah, I actually like this decision because now the Smee can challenge a Chernobog's followers, but the Smee would get removed from the board as well yep. as there's no captain. Now, what Yano can do is they could challenge the Chernobog's with Smee and then use the Porpsicle to heal Smee to keep the Smee on the board. Yep, absolutely. Or alternatively, the Captain Hook could come down. And of course, Smee's ability, if you have a captain in play, does not trigger. So that could be a way of saving it as well. But yeah, this is going to be a really tense game. Um, Amethyst Steel with a nice start there with a double Shona Box. Still haven't seen that Maleficent biding her time no. come into play yet, which I think that could be, like you say, that first game just coming down to that one law, that could be the difference maker. And we've already seen that Sapphire Steel player Yano can be really behind, but still just equalize and catch up with that Sapphire cards. Yeah, and don't panic, you're not missing any action. Judge just interacting with the players, making sure everything's okay. We'll have an update for you. You're not missing anything, don't panic. The Lawrence was played down on the board for the Amethyst Steel player before that that judge uh, has come to chat with the player. What do you think of Lawrence and Amethyst Steel? Really interesting. Yeah. It, it's a nice You didn't play it, right? No, and I do think it's a nice play on turn three, the quest for two. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, otherwise, I had like the Tiny Tink Tactician, I had the Fox. I think only playing three foxes is, is very surprising, but what Lawrence does give you, it gives you a more aggressive option on turn three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea of it. It doesn't get removed by Medusa. Yep. It's a nice card. Yeah, no, it's a very aggro option. Like we say, this these Amethyst Steel is actually just super low to the ground. You should always get to play the game. You should never be like hard. I'm sure it can happen, but you, I imagine hard bricking is yeah. rarer with these sort of decks. No, absolutely. And uh, Lawrence is a really interesting card. I believe it's a set two card. Yep. Didn't really see that much play, oh. but the more Medusas we've been seeing, 
there isn't as much steel like Tinkerbells anymore. Like, uh, there's a lot of steel decks, but not necessarily with Tinkerbell, which can be a big counter to Lawrence. It's a really nice card. Yeah, for sure, especially because these steel decks can struggle with locations as well, so it's an extra way to help deal with the Queen's Castle. And, of course, that dreaded Flynn Rider friend. I, mean, I haven't seen her. I think I've missed all the Ruby Amethyst matchups over the weekend. But well, You did one because I was the other side of the hall on my break yesterday. Oh, when I say be prepared. Yeah, OK, you. fair enough. But I'm yet to see a Flynn Rider friend of me, which is such a powerful card, just an extra three lore at the beginning of your turn if you have the character with the most strength. So people utilizing these things like Lawrence and Argus to just counter it because they know that they're used to having really slow starts. Yeah, absolutely. And don't panic, everyone. The action has not yet resumed. As soon as it does, we're going to be back watching the table. Both players just waiting for the all clear that we're good to go. The current board state is two Chernobog followers and a Lawrence down for Martin. And on the other side, Yarno has that Mr. Smee bumbling mate. And it could be that turn where they challenge a Chernobog to maybe draw with a Popsicle. Uh, here with the Popsicle could be a really interesting option. Yep, absolutely. This um, I, I don't expect the Smee to challenge unless that is then the follow-up plan because yep. that wouldn't be great value. This Smee is so well statted with its two will, uh, sorry, with its two law, three, three stat line. I really do think it's the best two drop in the game, at least from a stats yep. perspective. Uh, I think the other argument would be Ursa Deceiver, but this Smee, so incredibly strong. So yeah, it's a couple of options, as you say, could challenge into the Chernobog and uh, pop this Popsicle to heal it up or if we can get down a Captain Hook to protect him and that might be quite nice as well to like help deal with the re uh, the other Chernobog's followers would trade but if we can get a two for one then great absolutely and, and the thing is as well from Martin's perspective they're probably fully aware this Popsicle play can come in but that Popsicle in the discard pile is going to deny a potential card draw from Flavisham which could be a really big deal we saw in the previous game Yano with just grab your swords whole new world and Zeus in hand mm -hmm. somehow just managed to cross the finish line by yep. finding that Tamatoa in time but you can be left in a position where you just don't have that many cards especially if your items are getting removed so while the Chernobog might get removed and Smee mm. remains on the board the Popsicle being banished is still going to be a nice thing indeed yeah for sure but these Popsicles can certainly help with cards like Tamatoa as you said and the one copy of Aerial Treasure Collector and yeah they're pretty much guaranteed to always have more items than their opponent as long as they've got one down so yeah super interesting I can't wait to see how the rest of this match is going to play out. Just going to have a quick look through the deck list while we're waiting yeah, for the okay. players to uh, to come back in. Two copies of that Beast Hard-Headed also going to be irrelevant in this matchup from an item perspective, but it is a five-cost character, the quest for two, so that could be super aggressive. Uh, nice option in, in Amethyst, in Steel Sapphire to sing a whole new world and grab your swords, but sure. we're going back on to the players. Everything yep. is sorted. Everything's good to go, so it is going to be moving on to Yarno's turn. They haven't yet inked. We saw Martin quest of those two Two Chernobog's followers not drawing with either of them and putting that Lawrence down on the board. So there's now two ink available for Yano, and it looks like that beast hard-headed might be going into the inkwell. Quite possibly. We may play this Fortisphere, uh, Fortisphere first to draw and then ink, but... We will find out. No Mickey Mouse Detective in the deck. Uh, sorry, in the, in the hand, which would be a nice play here. Ink, play the detective, ramp up for five. But that's not going to be an option. We do have Flavisham. Won't be online until next turn. But that's another reason why he may be tempted to keep this Porpoiseclaw on the field. You mentioned that there's a nice play that would help keep Smee. But then the Porpoiseclaw is gone for the Flavisham on the next turn. But there is a Fortisphere in hand. It depends how, how desperate Yano is for card draw, really. But at the moment, they seem to have some cards. There's that Lucky Dime in the hand. Not great at this point in the game but later on that could absolutely be a difference maker yeah there is that captain hook and it is going to go into the inkwell so there was the option of playing the captain hook and it's going to be smee captain hook are we going to see that porpsicle healing the smee to keep it on the board because there was of course the option of playing the hook but going for the Fortisphere instead, and the Porpsicle is going to yep. heal the Smee. Like it. Chernobog's followers into the discard, and there's another Chernobog's followers still on the board. Brilliant play, and yeah, then Smee just taking one damage for the end of the turn for not having a captain on board. And we move over to Martin, who is holding two copies of Merlin Rabbit. I believe that is one fox and one snake. The uh, Pretty much all the bounce package in Martin's hand. He is going to take that quest with Chernobog and dig for another card. It's a Queen's Castle, which is a very strong card in this Sapphire Steel matchup. But with two Mr. Smees on the build, on the board. Can't quite deal with the Queen's Castle, but I think you want to wait to play the Queen's Castle until you are more guaranteed it's going to get more longevity out of it. But 
Yano is running one copy of Rise of the Titans. So these Queen's Castles are going to be really important potentially. We're going to quest with Lawrence up to two. And this is a really good example of how Lawrence or why Lawrence is such a powerful character. With this 4-4 four, four stat line, it may have zero strength, but if it's got no damage on it, it is a 4-4. Four, four. And those Mr. Smees are not only not going to be able to remove it, if they did, they would be banished themselves. So this Lawrence is going to continue to quest for quite a while longer. Flavisham's going to banish the Fortus Sphere, draw two cards. Of course, Yano could challenge the Lawrence with both Smees, and only one would be removed from the board. So that is an interesting option. The Rabbit on Martin's side can't be challenged. That is going to happen. So one Smee is removed by nice. Lawrence, but then Lawrence has zero strength when it has damage, so the second Smee is able to remove it and not take any damage. Mm. But it does take one damage as there's no captains on the board as it's now Martin's turn. Yeah, super nice play, being able to take out that Lawrence, as you said, as soon as it takes any damage. Oh, but boom Hello! A boom I did that for Ross. He's been saying that all weekend. We're going to see the rabbit singing, friends on the other side. We draw two cards. It's another friends and, and another goat. Very nice. Good options to have if oh. your name is Martin right now. Absolutely. Already at six law. Still quite a way to go, but this is certainly going to help. We're going to see that snake. And this is the Amethyst package doing exactly what it wants to do. Recycling these rabbits. Obviously drawing a card when it enters and exits play. Also just protecting the rabbit from being taken out. Obviously there's nothing on Yano's board at the moment that can take it out, but that could very quickly change. So, loving this. We're going to ink that Queen's Castle and down comes that Sherlock's followers. Yeah, and while Martin's had a slower start to this game, we saw them getting to around like 12 law in the previous game. Mm -hmm. The other thing that has happened is that Yano has not ramped. So Yano is not going to be able to get that kind of explosive questing power that we saw in the previous game where they got that Tamatoa down and with a couple of quests, they were able to get to 20. That is not going to happen this time. So Martin's got more time to work with. Yep. And therefore that bounce package of bouncing the rabbit back and having more cards in hand is definitely going to be relevant because it's going to be a longer game. It is going to be the beast hard-headed onto the board. Not exactly what you're looking to spend five ink on, Baker. Not really, but no. Dancing, grab your swords next turn, which is going to be a big threat for Martin. Yeah, and that 4-4 four, four stat line should compete with most of the cards in Martin's deck, should be able to deal with them. And of course, it does just quest for two. But yeah, Martin's in this weird stage of when you're playing the Amethyst package, you know, you know you're... Oh. Long came Zeus onto the beast hard-headed, immediately removing that tempo that Yano was trying to build. But yeah, if you know your opponent's playing a whole new world, you need to find that mid-stage. You don't want to have no cards in your hand, but if you overdo it, you really tempt them into that whole new world. And just throwing down a Smee here on Martin's side of the board, just just super low-pressure characters. Uh, sorry, uh, low-cost, high-pressure yeah, characters, absolutely. I meant to say. And I love this play by Martin. It might seem a bit odd. Why are you using Zeus on a simple beast hard-headed? Well, the threat was that Yano could sing, grab your swords, mm -hmm. get to six ink, and play Tink, which was exactly what Yano was probably planning on doing, and then this Madam Mim Snake and the Smee would be removed, and that is three lore lost for Martin. So deciding instead of developing another character, just playing, paying for to play Zeus. Of course, ideally, you get that four cost character down and you sing Zeus because it costs you nothing to do so. But Martin realizing that wasn't going to help him in the situation, and I really love that play. There is the Tink. No items for Flavisham right now yet either, Baker. So that healing of the Porpsicle we saw earlier is now denying Yano potential card draw. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. I still respect. I, I, I agree with the play yeah. he made to protect the Smee, but you got to imagine he wanted to find some more items to work with this Flavisham by now. Hasn't happened as of yet. We're over on to Martin, who Martin's has are a goat baker. A couple of goats in hand now. He's eyeing up a rabbit. The rabbit on board, working out what he wants to do with that, potentially questing. But yeah, go back to your previous. Another goat baker. Is that three goats? Three goats in Martin's hand right now. That is pretty crazy. That's going to really help Martin close out the game. We're at 11 law now. So, yeah, these three goats are, like, super online at this point and yeah. going to provide a lot of pressure. And, yeah, just a quick note to say, the, being able to exert characters to sing songs for no ink cost is one of the most powerful things to do in Lorcana. And Sapphire Steel Player in particular definitely always wants to be singing those songs with a character so that you can still continue to apply pressure to the board. So removing that beast hard-headed with the Zeus on the previous turn I think has really changed this game for Martin. Otherwise, he'd have had a clear board at this point yeah so Yano can sing grab your swords with Tinkerbell 
play another Tinkerbell, for example, that would clear the whole board yep. again, but might instead decide to challenge with Tinkerbell. That is what they do. And then the two damage counters are going to go onto the Rabbit, and in comes the second Tinkerbell, clearing the Smee and the Rabbit. Martin's going to draw, though, from the Rabbit, entering the discard. Martin is uh, not going to be too happy about that, but you know what they are going to be happy about? Oh, oh goats! In the hand! Four! That's a lot of goats, Joe. That's an awful lot of goats, yeah. This is a lot of pressure if you can just chain these. But you know what he, what he really wants is some bounce cards to be able to return them to his hand. We're also seeing a Benja, but no items on Yarno's side of the board. Hasn't been able to utilize that Flavisham, but yeah, these four goats are huge. Now, I say that Martin's going to be happy about the four goats. However, I believe they're not too happy because I think they're currently at six ink which would mean that they can't play double goat this turn, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what they could do is they could ink a goat and play Benja plus goat, because you need as much questing power as possible. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a goat, two ink remaining. Now, does Martin ink a goat to play Benja? Do they ink Benja to hold on to the goats? It's a really big decision for Martin. I would wager we might see a goat getting inked to play the Benja because you need as much questing power as possible. Now, next turn, if Martin finds an inkable, they can go double go. Yep, for sure. And plus, again, if we find these bounce cards like snakes and fox, we can continue to bounce them back to the hand. Yeah, I imagine Yano was quite surprised to see that go go into the inkwell, but it does make sense. As you say, you want to fully utilize your inkwell. And Benja questing for two is quite big, even though it wasn't able to remove an item. So, yeah, nice play. In is going to come Aerial Treasure Collector, currently questing for three. Yes, no items on the board at the moment. Are there any in hand? There is a dime. There is a dime. So dime could come down for Yano next turn. As you said, Yano hasn't been able to ramp efficiently in yeah. this game. We normally see these Sapphire decks able to make these huge moves by this point in the game, but Yano missing the Mickey, missed the Fishbone Quill, and of course, playing Quill would have been risky against the Benger anyway. We're going to quest up with everything. Yeah, getting... Lots of questing from Yano, bumps them up to six. Uh -huh. Now they can quest next turn if they play the dime with the aerial for five, but they won't have enough ink to also exert the dime to get five more lore from aerial. So Yano currently can get five, eight law next turn. It's a goat. It's another goat. Ooh, and, and the crowd has loved yeah. that one here. Triple goat all on the board. One in the inkwell as well, just for good measure. Yeah, this seems like uh, the route to Martin bringing this to a 1-1. One -one. And yeah, this game is being shown on a screen in the main hall. Uh, uh, we can't see them, but we can certainly hear them. I imagine there's a big crowd around there. But yeah, we're definitely reaching the later stages of this game. Yano has three, four, five, six, seven, eight ink on board. Potentially can play that lucky dime. So I think Yano is on a two-turn clock here. But Martin with three goats and one Benja is already, it'll be game. If, if Martin goes into his turn, he has brought it to 1-1. One, one. Can Yano interrupt? Yeah, and while Martin had a slower start this game, they didn't have that Smee on turn two. It was just a Chernobog's followers. Yano just didn't find that ramp. And they are only playing three copies of Mickey Mouse. Uh -huh. And we saw how impactful that Mickey Mouse was in game one. In fact, they mulligan Fishbone Quill to keep that Mickey Mouse in their opening hand. Now, Flavisham could, interestingly enough, banish the Lucky Dime to draw two cards here. They're not going to do that, though. They are going to quest of everything. But it, 14 lore is needed, and it's not going to be 14 oh. lore. Yarno, by the ramp options of Sapphire Steel, the deck becomes slightly less intimidating. I can see a couple copies of Tinkerbell. There's a lot of rabbits. Martin could also kind of take the approach to really just try and outdraw their opponent. There is Fishbone Quill and Mickey Mouse in hand for Yarno, which is exactly what they're going to be looking to see. Mm -hmm. Looks like Fishbone Quill is getting mulliganed again. Mickey Mouse, the preferred option on turn three for Yarno, fearing those Bengers. Question for you, Joe. If you are on the draw going second like Martin here, how aggressively are you looking for this Benger? Do you think it's that important? Good question. I think that in an open deck list format, you probably anticipate your opponent to have the Mickey, but you just want to really be able to punish them if they don't. Right. They don't. If they don't have the Mickey and they end up playing that Fishbone Quill, you really, really do want to be removing it from the board as swiftly as possible. I think for Martin, it might not seem like it's exactly what you want, 
but the Chernobog's followers on one, and then on turn two, like Magic Broom Chernobog's again, and then you just try and draw with all of these cards as much as possible before the board wipe can come through, could be a very nice approach. Also, maybe that Maleficent biding her time on turn one into something like a Madame Im Snake on turn two to bounce it back and yep. replay it later. It could be a good option. We didn't see Yano find that Captain Hook on turn one yet. So Martin might be able to quest with the turn one play uncontested. Of course, a Smee on two or a Baboom on two would be a great option for Yano as well. So I think if Yano finds those early game cards, it's going to be a real struggle for Martin. Yeah, 100%. Only two copies of the Captain Hook in the deck. We are yet to see it, but it still may make an impact. And even if it's just protecting Mr. Smee because of the Captain on board, we're going to be cutting each other's decks. I think our players are very, very similar colored sleeves. Maybe a twinge more purple from Yano. We see the fist bump and we move into game three. Who will be going on to top eight? Will it be Yano? Will it be Martin? Let's find out. Yano's going first. Yano has lots of cards to play on turn two. A smear, a boom, and an Argus, but nothing on turn one. Not even a Porpsicle or a Fortosphere. Okay, so definitely going to be pleased that they are going first because going second Maker. with no one drop is huge. It's going to happen. Are we Is seeing it, it? Finally, time. Maleficent has oh, been oh, biding oh. her time here <laughs> Nicely done. in this series. Is this the moment, or is Martin going to decide to maybe try and play this Maleficent down a little bit later? Because it could get baboomed. It is uninkable, of course, so you're going to have to play it at some point. You would imagine it's going to come into the play. Martin really just taking the time on what to ink. It's going to be the broom. And Maleficent, biding her time, Here she is. enters the board. A card which is uninkable. It only has one strength and one willpower, but it can quest for two. And Martin is holding this Madame Mim Snake, as you said, so it does have that option available to him to be able to quest with this Maleficent and then just bounce it back to his hand, put the snake on board, which has the exact same strength and willpower as Mr. Smee. So that's a nice little check there. And of course, leaving Maleficent to bide her time in the hand for another day. I, I appreciate that pun. Nice. Top, top, top marks for that, my man. <laughs> so it's going to be the fox, which gets inked. It is going to be a Chernobox followers okay. and another oh. Chernobox followers. Okay. I love it. So many one drops down on the board, and Yano is going to be pretty spooked about this. Yep. We'll be able to take out this Maleficent with the Mr. Smee. We'll only yeah. take one damage, and then he'll take an extra one damage at the end of the turn if there's not a captain on board, but then at least still survives, and next turn will be available to take out something else or quest. And if you can get a two for one out of Smee, that feels pretty good. Now, what's interesting for Martin is they do decide to quest with the Maleficent. However, if they had gone for a Chernobog's followers on turn one, mm -hmm. this Mr. Smee, if it was to challenge the Chernobog's followers, would be removed from the board. Yep, good point. So I'm wondering if maybe Martin could have sequenced this differently, gone for a Chernobog's on turn one, and then on turn two played this Maleficent and then maybe bounced it back into the hand. The Smee is going to remove the Maleficent. Taking that one damage. No, I think you make a really good point. Um, the sequence in there could have changed everything. Going to draw into a long came Zeus. The second copy, not really what Martin wants to see. There's a Merlin rabbit in hand, a snake. Only two inkables in the hand. We are going to be uh, questing with Chernobog's followers, taking that draw. We find a Madame in Fox, which is a good pickup, especially in combination with the rabbit in hand. Yeah, it certainly is. The, the concern for Martin as well now is that the fact that Yano has ramped, even though this me has two damage counters on, on turn five or at five ink, you're very much anticipating Yano maybe to play that Cogsworth. Now, if this was a Maleficent, right? So you play the Maleficent, for example, on turn two, uh -huh. the Smee removes the Chernobog's followers potentially. It would then be banished, mm -hmm. and then you could have bounced back this Chernobog's followers. So I, I'm really thinking that this Maleficent could have come down on turn two instead of turn one. Yep, I, I, I respect it. Definitely an interesting um, sequence to think through. We're going to be inking a Tamatoa on Yano's side of the board. He's holding a Cogsworth, a Porpsicle, and I think that's a Baboom, and an Argus. So this Cogsworth, definitely going to put in a lot of work. That, oh, so much. that resist one is going to be the ultimate protector of Mr. Smee. Yeah, Mr. Smee, while it does not have a captain on the board, it does have resist one, thanks to Cogsworth. So that one damage which comes through at the end of the turn is going to be negated by the resist effect from Cogsworth. But the Smee does not exert to quest. 
which is really curious. Yano clearly valuing this Mr. Smee on the board instead. And I'm surprised by that. Mm. Martin's going to quest with the trainer box and draw. Finds a bell that uh, oh, hello. accomplished mystic, I believe. Yeah, yeah I know. so bell can move dam up to three damage counters from any character to any other character of your choice. So those two damage counters of Smee could be moved elsewhere. Now, I don't believe, Baker, that resist is impacting Bell's ability. I'm not sure it's on that. It's placing... Because it's moving damage yeah. counters, I have a feeling that resist doesn't impact that. So that's something to look out for. Yeah, I think you might be right. There is a difference between moving damage counters and doing damage. We find a whole new world for Yano. Could sing it with the Cogsworth. Not likely to be the immediate instinct. We're going to play Porpsicle, playing one. Draw ourselves a card. We find the Lucky Dime off the top. And again, like you say, Yano in this game compared to game two has been able to ramp courtesy of that Mickey Mouse, and that does make a big difference. Also went first, but they did miss their turn one drop, which was yeah. a shame for sure. I think Martin now in this position with that Tinkerbell in hand is going to try and get back this board control. We haven't seen them have board control at all in this series so far, but this is a different game. They're going second. We've seen a lot of card draw come through off the Trainer Box followers. Mm. If they can start to get rid of this Cogsworth and whittle down the board, then they might just be able to cross the finish line. Mm -hmm. No Fishbone Quill ramp, so it was the Mickey Mouse ramp, but that's the only ramp that Yano's had access to. I don't think we've seen the Fishbone Quill hit the board the entire game. Clearly, um, Yano realizing that it's not always going to be the most beneficial play uh, going up against Avengers. This Cogsworth is going to be exerting. Is it going to be having a sing song? Oh, yes, it is. is. I thought he changed his mind halfway through there, but we do play a whole new world. And both players are going to discard their entire hands, draw seven. Martin just doing a quick check to see what's in the discard. Does have that lucky dime, but it's perfectly happy to be in the discard. Tamatoa can grab that when it's needed. Yeah, Martin going to be looking for some goats, you would imagine. It's a little bit early for the goats, but you never really say no, would you? No. I mean, Martin managed to draw all four in the last game. Mm. Doesn't seem like they have access to any just yet. There is a Benger in there as well, which could deny the Porpsicle healing something up. Are we going to see maybe a double Cogsworth? We most certainly are. Every character on the board now has resist two, with the Cogsworth themselves having resist one. We see the Smee remove the snake, and it has resist two, mm -hmm. so only one damage taken back. Great value, and uh, maybe we now see the explanation behind the decision to yep. just keep the Smee ready on the previous turn, seeing that if he could find that second Cogsworth off of the whole new world, then would enable this play to take out the snake and to completely survive. The Smee has really out stage is welcome for Martin. Tons of gas, tons of questing, tons of yeah. challenging. Martin put down a second Merlin rabbit. To draw and again, it. it goes back to that turn one play to play the Maleficent, right? Yeah. yeah. Play the Chernobog's followers and your quest, and then the Smee would be getting banished if it challenges. Whereas only one strength on the Maleficent meant the Smee could stick around for longer, and then the Cogsworth would have gotten there. Now, of course, Yano might not have even challenged the Chernobog's followers, but that would have meant Martin could have a little bit more lore, potentially. The Magic Broom enters the board two rabbits down martin can definitely keep trying to gain back some board control the problem is that resist power from cogsworth makes it very difficult to clear if you don't have a card like be prepared under the sea or sisu yeah, very much so. This ward keyword, incredibly powerful. Only a small handful of cards can get round it. Yano, quite a few options in hand. We have that Bell, who will be able to quest for a lot when we get to 10 ink. We're not quite there yet. Copy of a Boom in hand. Yeah, both players with a lot of cards available, thanks to Yano singing A Whole New World. Yano only on one law as it stands, still 19 away. Martin is at seven. So from this position, Yano's just going to be looking to deny as much questing power from Martin as possible. So things like grab your swords, tinker bells are going to be really very valuable. We see another popsicle come through. And it's going to be a smee this turn, time drawn by Yano. I think it was a whole new world. Do we ever see Bell? 
Bell with. is going to do some extra ramping because you can ink one extra card per turn yep. with Bell. Yep, the reader book ability basically acting kind of like a, a mini fishbone quill built into the body of Bell. And yeah, she's going to be a very aggressive quester. Yana only at one law at the moment, so a lot of catching up to do. But as we keep saying, these Sapphire Debts can make huge jumps. And Martin's going to reach this point where, like, you come to that decision of, am I okay? Am I going to continue to try and challenge the board, or am I just racing to game? Yep. Smee coming Smee down. Bumbling, mate. You know you've got a good board when you have to start playing cards on top of it. <laughs> yes, Unless for you're sure. shifting, of course. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I don't think that Smee is able to shift onto Bell. I'm not sure. You know what? I've got a feeling not, but never mind. Maybe in the future. But yeah, this is a huge white board from Yarno. And worth pointing out yet again, these two Cogsworth blanket resist two to every character that isn't named Cogsworth. Cogsworth gets a resist one from each other. But yeah, this is going to be a hard board to deal with. Like you just said, Joe, without access to things like Be Prepared, that just ignore damage completely. Yeah. So, yeah, Martin definitely has a hill to climb to be able to equalize this field. So, might not even bother, might just continue to race. He's got quite a few cards in hand. We find a Queen's Castle, which could distract some attention from Yarno's board and away from questing. But at the same time, Yarno may reach a point where he can just race the game. Yeah, and this Mr. Smee just able to remove a rabbit and not even take a single bit of damage back thanks to that it, mate. two from double Cogsworth. Didn't even feel it, mate. Not a thing. <laughs> this Cogsworth is keeping him well protected. Martin's still, of course, drawing a card off the rabbit. And yeah, has quite a few cards in hand. Weighing up options here. Of course, we are in the top 16. It is all to play for. The winner of this game will win themselves a Mickey Mouse. We pass back over to Martin, finally, who's got a ready, set, draw. Finds a Merlin Goat off the top. Okay, this is the start. This is how you start building a board and just chasing that law. Of course, preferably, you always want to try and bounce these goats back to your hand with the likes of Madame Mim Snake and yep. Madame Mim Fox. But at the same time, this is a nice white board that Martin's really building is. here. Played four for the goat, three for the Mr. Smee. This is a little bit more like it. Still doesn't have quite the dominance that Yano has with that resist two and just pure amount of characters. But now that Martin has a wide board, he could potentially quest very aggressively. We are going to remove that broom, drawing a card off the top. Yeah, all characters on Martin's side of the board with that three willpower means it's going to need something like a Tinkerbell and a Grab Your Swords to clear the questing potential from them. So Yano is going to be hoping to have access to that. No Tinkerbell currently available on the board. No Tinkerbell in hand either. The hand is Rise of the Titans, Mr. Smee, Mickey Mouse, and Baboom. So Yano, as wide as the board is, is starting to run out of removal yeah, options. Yeah, it's a bit underwhelming really, isn't it, unfortunately? I think Yano really needs to put a lot of faith in this board that he's built up. Five law from Bell, however. If there's 10 ink in the ink well, this Bell is going to quest for five. Still weighing up options here. Again, these are, we still got another 22 minutes. This is the last game. By all means, take your time. We're potentially moving on to the top eight here. So really think it through. Make sure that you are considering all the lines, considering the options. We're seeing two Babooms hit the ink well. One for, just for inking. It was Rise of the Titans. Oh, it might have been. But one card just from normal inking. And then the other one, yep. I believe, was Bell's Read a Book. Bell questing for five. Cogsworth for two. Smee for two. Oh. Mickey Mouse for one. Oh. Smee for two and Cogsworth for two as well. That is a lot of lore which Yano is adding up for us. I'm not, I'm not even... 14? If Bell's questing for four, <laughs> sorry, for five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, there you go. That was a one heck of a turn. Yano going all the way to 16. Going to play another Mr. Smee and a Mickey Mouse detective. Just full extension of the board. A bit more rampant saying, have an answer to this or I am going on to top eight. Can Martin interrupt this board? Martin needs 10 law. They're not going to be able to clear everything. Nope. They do have a goat available. They've got some questing power on the board as well as a goat on the board. So they're going to quest with everything. That's a quest for four. Martin's now up to 14 law with a goat on the board and a goat in hand. Six law more needed. It's going to be a magic broom for one. That's not going to gain any law. Nope. Goat is going to come through, bumping them up to 15. The magic broom's going to draw. Snake? They find a grab your swords, but it seems like it's too little, too late. The Benja's going to get inked. The Smee's going to hit the board. 
but Yano is going to be victorious and has got themselves a golden Mickey Mouse, brave little Taylor.